Hi folks, Brian here again from Water Control Corporation, here to talk about water recycling. The early 2000s saw a green revolution in the plumbing and mechanical world. This is when LEED certified buildings started to appear and people began to take a big interest in the conservation of water and energy. As such, there was a great demand for systems and equipment designed to harvest or reclaim certain wastewater streams for primarily non-potable use. On the surface, it may seem simple, but there are quite a few moving pieces to this puzzle. And there is real danger of systems not functioning properly, or even worse, people getting sick. Let's take a look at some of the design considerations for these systems. First of all, what water sources can I use for water reclaim applications? Well, the most common source is rainwater, usually from the building's roof. Other sources could be cooling system condensate, gray water from showers, labs, and clothes washers, groundwater from foundation drainage systems, RO concentrate, vehicle wash water, or various industrial process waters. Note that we don't normally recycle black water, which contains human, animal, or food waste. And where do we use this reclaimed water? Well, examples of common applications would be turf irrigation, toilet flushing, cooling tower feed, tanker filling, vehicle wash feed, water features, and industrial processes. Usually we are not making potable water due to the large amount of regulation involved, though it is possible to do. When the water is collected, it almost always needs some pre-filtration to remove large debris and organics. Don't skip this step, even though it does add cost and space requirements. It will save you big time in the long run in terms of maintenance and headache. And there are several types of self-cleaning filters out there that can be used to efficiently pre-screen the water. Then the water needs to be stored. Now tanks may be indoor or outdoor, above grade or buried, and made of materials like polyethylene, fiberglass, concrete, or galvanized steel with a liner. A very important note, it's always best to recirculate and treat your tank so that it doesn't go stagnant or septic on you. Once the water has gone septic, it's very difficult to make it safe again and to eliminate the bad odors that appear. This brings up the issue of treatment. If you're only doing subsurface drip irrigation, then all you need is to filter the water to 100 micron to protect those emitters. But for any other application, it's really important to incorporate both filtration and disinfection. The three most common methods would be UV, or ultraviolet light treatment, with five micron filtration, ozone gas injection with 25 micron filtration, or chlorine injection with 25 micron filtration. And again, it is best to make sure that the treatment begins with the water in the storage tank, as opposed to simply trying to clean it up right before it goes out for delivery. That often doesn't work. Finally, there is the delivery system itself. You'll essentially need a booster pump to get the water from the tank out to the fixtures or equipment. Nowadays, that's usually accomplished via a high efficiency, variable speed, constant pressure pump system. And in most applications, you'll also need a city water backup in case you run out of reclaimed water. This is best accomplished by an automatic bypass valve with city water fed through an RPZ backflow preventer. Of course, this is code dependent and there are other methods. From our experience, it's always better when these systems come pre-plumbed, pre-wired, and pre-tested in a single package skid system with a central control panel and lots of built-in fail-safe mechanisms. Trying to do it piecemeal usually ends up being a disaster. It is best to have one manufacturer and one warranty to deal with. Otherwise, there are lots of things that can go wrong, and they probably will. To get started on your water reclaim application, please contact Water Control Corporation today.